Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. And tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast at 735 p.m., it's all about winter storms, the one over the weekend that will impact the northeast and interior mid-Atlantic states, and the second one that'll be for Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's going to be a major storm that'll bring big snows to parts of the Midwest and the Plains, and it's also going to bring heavy rain, screaming winds, and severe weather to the eastern U.S., so it's a busy time in the weather world, and that's tonight at 7.35 p.m. Uh, right here on YouTube. All right, let's go through a few things that are going on that I want to uh, touch on uh, as we uh, start to get closer and closer to this weather system for the weekend. And I'm, I, I took a different uh, satellite view here. This is the full disk loop, and you can see the big storm that is sitting out in the Atlantic. Uh, and th this is actually helping things along. This is one of those lows that earlier this week moved off the East Coast. Uh, we've got one that's moving off the East Coast today and heading out to the east behind that one. And we've got upper troughs that go back up through the Great Lakes and into the plains. And we have our energy that moved into the west yesterday that is now dropped into the southwest and moving into Texas and pushing its way eastward and making progress. And that's going to be uh, our weekend weather system as it moves along. At least from the standpoint of the radar, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on. In the eastern half of the United States, the, ra the radars are relatively quiet, except for some precipitation now pulling out of parts of Maine. Uh, we do have uh, some uh, snow in the mountains of New Mexico. Uh, now some of that snow and some rain, too, moving into parts of northwest Texas. And we've got a little bit of action going on in the Pacific Northwest. This is as of, I'm going to bring up, whoops, I'm going to bring up the um, weather.gov here. I didn't set the map ahead of time, so sorry about that, folks. Oh, good Lord. Uh, uh, G-O-V. There we go. Uh, there we are. Sorry about the delay. Okay, so uh, we've got winter storm warnings up for parts of New Mexico. We've got a number of winter weather advisories uh, that have gone up for Kansas and also for uh, northern Oklahoma and northwest Texas. Winter storm watches, the first ones, are now up from the North Carolina mountains on up into central Pennsylvania. We're likely to see more of those uh, as we move along. So those are the first. I'm not sure what uh, the local offices are going to do for the inland areas here at, uh, at this stage of the game. And I want to show you my early call snow forecast map that I, uh, I I did yesterday, and I am not going to be changing uh, this uh, at all until uh, tomorrow, when I'll probably do a final call uh, snow forecast map for tomorrow evening. And I generally went for a, a slushy inch or two for the coastal areas, and then I've got a sort of a two to four inch area range uh, from west of Philadelphia to about Harrisburg, going in toward uh, northeastern Pennsylvania uh, and northwest New Jersey. And then I have these four to six inch areas uh, in uh, much of the rest of eastern Pennsylvania, as well as the Catskills and parts of the Hudson Valley, uh, two to four for southern New England and for southeastern New England. Based on what I've been seeing lately, uh, I think I am going to probably have to raise these num inland numbers. Now, the coastal numbers are still, I think, sort of tenuous in spite of what some of the guidance has been doing today. And I'll get to that uh, in a moment uh, because uh, I don't like to change things on the fly off of one model run that suddenly goes crazy. And I think there's some reasons why the models are doing that. Meanwhile, WPC, now uh, this is a seven-day uh, liquid precip forecast, so bear in mind that there are two systems here involved. Uh, so uh, we're talking about seven-day rainfall totals, possibly in excess of three inches from, Maine, from southern Maine all the way down the east coast into the southeast and down into the lower Gulf states with a large area of an inch and a half plus that extends back uh, into uh, – uh, parts of uh, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, down through Missouri, and then into easternmost Oklahoma and Texas. And, of course, you've got half-inch to inch-and-a-quarter amounts on the edge of this. And 
from Oklahoma northeastward on up into Michigan. And remember, there's a second storm for uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And in that area, you're likely to see that fall in the form of snow. Uh, Also, uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half up in the northern Rockies and heavy rains in the Pacific Northwest of several to many inches as energy just continues to move into the Northwest and, and head inland and now we're starting to get these winter storms here uh, in the east. So let's cover the first weather system. This is WPC's uh, probability for at least two inches. This was their forecast from earlier today. So I imagine that they'll probably be updating this going into this evening. Uh, the dark blue is a where the 40% line is a 40% chance for at least two. And it lies north and west of Washington and Baltimore, north and west of Philadelphia, just north and west of New York City, and then running along the shores of Connecticut into south, southern Rhode Island and uh, cutting across southeastern Massachusetts. You start to get into the salmon color, and you're talking about a 70 to 80% chance, I'm sorry, an 80 to 90% chance of... Um, uh, of 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 at least two inches of snow, and then in the reds, you're talking about 90 to a 90 percent or higher. Uh, so it's a fairly high probability here, uh, with the uh, the areas in Pennsylvania, in, in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, and then on up into uh, the uh, Hudson Valley, the middle and upper Hudson Valley for sure, and in and around the Catskills, northwest Connecticut, and much of Massachusetts. Now this is the probability for at least four. And it's 80% or higher in northwest New Jersey, northeastern Pennsylvania, northeastward into the Catskills, northwest Connecticut, parts of western Mass, and also uh, some areas up in north central Massachusetts uh, into southern New Hampshire. Uh, the probabilities get very low as you get down in, along the coast. But bear in mind, this was done on old guidance, so I don't know where their mindset is uh, going forward. Now, I, I want to briefly look at the long range here and take a look at the storm system that's coming up for Tuesday because that's going to be a big player and you'll notice that we've got uh, 50 to 70 and 70 to 90 percent probabilities in the blue areas here from the Oklahoma panhandle northeastward into southwest Iowa and northern Missouri that is going to be for the period Monday into Tuesday and then as we go on to Tuesday into Wednesday uh, we have uh, 30 to 50 in green, 50 to 70 for northern Illinois, uh, eastern Wisconsin, western Michigan, uh, and points north and east. Also, because there probably will be the chance for a front-end thump, we've got higher probabilities up in the Appalachian Mountains, as well as uh, northeastern Pennsylvania, and then on northward through upstate New York and into interior central and northern New England. Uh, these are This is for the probability for at least three inches is what uh, we're showing here on the long range. So I just wanted to touch upon that. All right, let us let me show you what's going on here because uh, we we've, we've have a, a bit of a, a rad- I don't know if I want to call it a radical change, but back many, many days ago, the GFS was trying and other models were trying to show <laughs> – a fairly wrapped up storm. When I say wrapped up, I mean a fairly intense storm uh, off the Jersey coast uh, that develops from this shortwave trough that's moving uh, eastward through the Ohio Valley. Then it kind of backed away from that. And now all of a sudden today, you see how it makes this cutoff low right up here. There's an upper low that closes off right along or just south of the south shore of Long Island uh, that causes the surface low on this run today to intensify rapidly and suddenly there's all this wraparound heavy snow that occurs Sunday morning into the afternoon for the northern half of New Jersey, Long Island, New York City, the Hudson Valley and into southern New England. I'm not ready to believe that that is going to be the case. Uh, I, I This was such a... You know, oftentimes when models show things and then they got away from it, uh, they don't come back to that solution. So seeing this today really surprised me that uh, the model has suddenly gone back to something that it was showing five or six days ago. When we look at the European upper air, it sort of tries to do the same thing, except that 
the cutoff forms in southeastern Massachusetts, and you see it here uh, come Sunday afternoon sitting east of Cape Cod. And this, of course, would have ramifications for heavier snows for southeastern New England and also for southern New England to an extent. Uh, but again, this is you know showing it happening further to the east. Both models bring up snow amounts in their snow map forecasts, quote unquote, which are very dangerous things to look at because uh, they they assume a 10 to 1 snow ratio, and the ratio may actually be more like 7 to 1 or 8 to 1. And it also assumes that every drop of liquid precipitation is going to be in the form of snow. And we don't know that that necessarily is going to be the case. So uh, there's a lot of variables here. The bottom line is uh, that early call snow forecast that I made may be on the low side of what's out there right now, but I feel comfortable just staying with it for now and then tomorrow if the guidance starts to show that this idea of a more wrapped up storm system is going to be real then I can always nudge the numbers up and I don't think it would be a huge surprise to most people or at least they shouldn't uh, except the spiteful ones that just want to have something to say and come back at me with some some sort of insult uh, but if if the models show start going in that direction then there's plenty of time for me to just go ahead and, and up numbers if I have to. But for now, I'm going to stay the same. There's your surface low off the Delaware coast uh, early Sunday morning at 1 a.m. Then it's just east of Atlantic City at 7 a.m. And then you can see here all that dark blue shows up. And that's where the GFS intensifies this low. Uh, the pressure actually drops almost 11 millibars at six hours, which is you know phenomenal uh, deepening that, that it's indicating. So, again... Is it real? I don't know. Then it pulls away. We dry out for, for Monday, and we get colder as a big high builds to the, from the north in Quebec. And then here comes uh, the next system that for six days now, the models have been taking a major storm, developing it in the southern plains, and then taking it up uh, into the Great Lakes. And sure enough, that's what it's still doing. Uh, and that's going to mean for... Uh, any snow that we get this weekend is going to get washed away. Uh, there might be a bit of a front-end thump, especially for, for upstate New York and for interior New England. But it goes to rain there, too, in many places. And heavy rain at that. Severe weather and heavy rain across the south and southeast. You can expect that starting on Monday along the Gulf Coast and then extending into the southeast uh, uh, Tuesday into Tuesday night. Uh, the low goes out. Uh, it's going to be windy ahead of it. We'll probably have screaming southeast winds, maybe even some coastal flooding and gusts over 50 miles an hour. And then we'll turn the winds to the northwest behind it and dry out for the second half of next week. So it was a lot there today on weather in five is probably going to measure out to be weather in 10. But I'm sure you'll forgive me for that since I had a lot of information to get out there. Don't forget tonight, the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast is at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll have more guidance, more new guidance to look at, and we'll go through everything for both the first and the storm, second storm system, and probably do a little long range after that. So we'll see you then.